Hello everybody, it's Christy, your friendly digital technology librarian. We have reached yet another Friday, so of course I have another Film Rec Friday for everybody. Now, this week and the last several weeks, we've heard a lot of people talking about Netflix's adaptation of the Hillbilly Elegy memoir. Now, we're starting to see some critical responses come out. Some people have been very positive about the adaptation. Some people have definitely been pretty negative. And this sort of made me wonder what exactly makes a fantastic biopic film. Now, Hillbilly Elegy was really quite acclaimed, the memoir itself. So does it depend on the cast thereafter? Is it not source material, but who is playing the roles? Um, is it the director? Is it the writing of the script? Is it the person that the story is covering? So what makes a biopic something everybody is going to want to see? So I went through over the last couple of weekends and watched a ton of biopics that are available on our streaming services. And you know what? There's not surprisingly not one simple answer to that question. There are a ton of phenomenal, phenomenal biopics out there though, and even if they don't have a one-size-fits-all answer, they are a hundred percent worth taking a look at. Uh, so this week we are going to look at a selection of really fantastic biopics that we have to, on offer. Uh, as always, these picks are entirely for free with the use of your Mylan Berlin Library card. They're going to be able to be found on one of our three video services, which are Clevenet's Overdrive, Hoopla Digital, and uh, Canopy. And without any further ado, let's go ahead and get to those biopic recommendations. My first recommendation is the only one I have this week from Clevenet's Overdrive, and it is for a phenomenal, phenomenal little film called A Quiet Passion. Now, A Quiet Passion covers the life of the absolutely brilliant American poet Emily Dickinson. Uh, the title role is played by Cynthia Nixon, who I previously really only knew as Miranda from Sex and the City. Now, if you've seen Nixon playing that role, I don't know that you'd necessarily think, wow, that is someone I would 100% cast as Emily Dickinson. At least that's not something that's running through my head at any point. Uh, that said, Nixon is absolutely fantastic as Dickinson. I mean, she embodies the concept of a quiet passion so, so well. Dickinson was subversive. She was thoughtful. She was brilliant. In a time when women were told to look a certain way, to behave a certain way, to think a certain way, all of that is boiling under the surface, but it's never, you know, overt or it's never super obvious that all of these strained bound feelings are are boiling away in her and Nixon does such a good job of expressing that without over expressing it 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 really is a fantastic fantastic acting job um Terrence Davies is the director he is a British artist who's done films like Deep Blue Sea uh House of Mirth he's definitely familiar with movies of that sort of subtle, quiet tone and nature, but for some reason he just does a fantastic job with this very American film in a lot of ways. Um, it, is a it is a British production, but there is a lot of just really colloquial production value to it. So I think they do a fantastic, fantastic job with regard to that. Uh, to making it feel very American period piece, despite it being a British film. Um, you've got an excellent supporting cast. Uh, Jennifer Elle, who is uh, particularly famous for playing Elizabeth Bennet in the Pride and Prejudice uh, miniseries from the BBC years and years ago, the one with Colin Firth. 
she's one of the the characters and and Nixon's Dickinson plays so well opposite all of these different people you know everything is so layered Every, nothing is just said openly and I love how well that comes across without being super obvious you know it's all about subtlety it's all about a quiet passion in this movie um so if you are a fan of say like those merchant ivory style movies um where every gesture means something different um where subtlety is king please do check out a quiet passion if you're an emily dickinson fan you absolutely have to check this one out um it's it really is a phenomenally well done uh, biopic and I would strongly recommend it to anyone. So please do check out A Quiet Passion on Cleavenet's Overdrive. All right, moving right along to our Hoopla digital recommendations, of which there are many. Um, let's kick things off with The Glass Castle, which is uh, the film adaptation of Jeanette Wells's uh, memoir. Now, this memoir follows Wells and her siblings from their childhood through to their adulthood uh, and their relationship with their two parents who are these wild and free spirits who absolutely love their family but make decisions that are questionable at best sometimes. Uh, the two parents are played by Naomi Watts, who is always fantastic, and Woody Harrelson, who is an amazing, amazing actor, and who is amazing at playing these somewhat damaged people. He is uh, playing a character who, again, absolutely loves his family, but who has a lot of issues. He definitely struggles with alcohol abuse. He struggles with a lot of contempt for mainstream society, so he's always fighting against that. He, he makes a lot of poor decisions, and those decisions very definitely affect the rest of his family in frequently adverse ways. Uh, so his relationship with his children is not surprisingly kind of poor as they grow older. You know, and again, it's one of those films where it's hard to watch that because Harrelson is so good at making characters likable. Even though this guy has made terrible choices and some seriously, seriously poor decisions, you still like things about him. You know, you like this free spirit, this, this go with the wind kind of nature. And it's very attractive. And I think the children find a lot of that attractive. Even as they grow older, they, they long for some of that freewheeling emotional freedom that they would feel when they were with him. Now, his, elder, his, his child Jeanette is played by uh, Brie Larson, who is an amazing, amazing actress. And she does, as always, an excellent job with this. But I really do think that this is one of those movies that Harrelson and his performance really pulls you in even more so than Larson's. Um, it is definitely Wells's movie. She is the main, main character, uh, but I, I think that pivotal character of her father is really what will draw people in the most. Um, so the film follows her life as she grows up and becomes an adult and it's not really a coming of age movie so much as a reactionary film i would say and that's perfectly watchable i i very much enjoy seeing how she looks back and sees all of these moments that lead her to where she is when we start uh, her adult life so if you're looking for a movie that makes you think, that makes you 
feel that will make you absolutely cry in moments that will make you frustrated um, that will make you frustrated with yourself for certain for feeling certain ways about characters definitely check out the glass castle it is a very gripping story um, in a quiet way uh, about a family that definitely struggles but that at its heart loves all the members so glass castle excellent pick my second recommendation from Hoopla is for a film called Misbehavior. Now, Misbehavior is based on a true life incident uh, when the very beginnings of the women's liberation movement actually managed to disrupt the 1970 World Miss pageant. Um, I believe that's what it's, yes, the 1970 Miss World pageant. Uh, at the time, it was quite a big deal that it even happened at all. Uh, but through watching this film, it actually led me to ask a lot of questions and then to actually go back and look at what the real situation was, what had happened, who was really involved. Um, and I love movies that prompt me to do things like that. Now, Misbehavior has a fantastic cast. It stars people like Kira Knightley. You've got Keely Hawes in here, uh, Gugu Mbatha-Ra, uh, Jesse Buckley, uh, Leslie Manville, Greg Kinnear. Uh, Greg Kinnear is especially a standout. He plays an aging Bob, uh, Bob Hope, uh, who frequently makes jokes that are quite off color. One, my recollections of seeing Bob Hope in all of his films and all of his little comedy bits, none of his jokes were really particularly edgy or, um, particularly button pushing, but a lot of things that he says here definitely are. You have things that he says that border on inappropriate with regard to women, with regard to other topics that today we would definitely not allow to fly. And it, and again, asks you to think about what that means. Like, how has comedy changed? Would this be okay today? Is there a reason that it should be okay? Should it not be? I'm, I mean, like I said, I love films that make you ask those kinds of questions. And misbehavior does that all over the place, while it still manages to be both clever, funny, and fun to watch. Um, performances are excellent across the board. Uh, you do have some standouts. Like I said, Greg Kinnear does an exceptional job. Kira Knightley is sort of the anchor character um, within the women's liberation movement. Uh, uh, Mbatha Ra is playing Miss Granada for uh, the Miss World's pageant group. Uh, it's it's just it's it's an interesting film that I definitely recommend to people who are looking for something that will make them think, and uh, in in addition to making uh, to entertaining them. So please do if you are uh, looking for a film like that, check out Misbehavior on Hoopla. It's it's a surprising little movie, and I was very happy that I chose to watch it uh, a couple weekends ago. Misbehavior. Um, another of my recommendations from Hoopla is called Ten Days in a Madhouse. Now, Ten Days in a Madhouse follows the real-life journalist Nellie Bly after she was asked by her editor to get herself committed to an insane asylum. She does so, and... It reveals so many horrific truths about the whole asylum system. I mean, the treatment of the people in those situations. At a time when anyone could have, almost anyone could have a woman committed to an asylum. Like, for absolutely ridiculous things. In addition to having actual emotional and mental distress, you had people who were simply opinionated or who simply were fighting back against abuses, uh, all, all put in these places and bound. And it, it's, it's truly horrifying. Um, so in this film, Bly is around 23 or four and she does as her editor asks her and she gets herself um, committed to an asylum with no set removal plan in place, which seems crazy <laughs> and like a terrible, terrible idea, but 
she was very much dedicated to the idea of uncovering truth and um, uncover it. She absolutely does. If you're looking for something that would like will likely be a majorly eye opening experience, please do check out 10 Days in a Madhouse. Uh, it is a, a thoroughly surprising film that I definitely about a, a situation that I was definitely not cognizant of um, as far as all of the kind of horrors that would go on. So 10 Days in a Madhouse, incredibly enlightening film. Um, another pick from Hoopla that I absolutely adored is called Becoming Astrid that follows the early life of the Swedish author Astrid Lindgren, who is most well known for being the author of the Pippi Longstocking books. I loved Pippi Longstocking as a child. I absolutely loved all of her tales. Um, and I had no idea that her author led such an interesting life, especially when you consider, you know, the time period in which these books were written. Now, Astrid Lindgren was a single unwed mother at the time. And those were, that was an era when that was simply not done. And this film traces how she got into the situation in which she found herself um, throughout that situation and then afterward as well. And it's really, one, it's a really well acted film. The girl who plays Lindgren is just so wonderful. She has this sort of vivacious, kinetic quality to her. She's so very alive. And, you know, she is, she lights up every single scene that she's in. And I think that's important when films have such a heavy subject to deal with as well, that you have someone who you are so drawn to in every single scene. And, and she does a phenomenal, phenomenal job. So I would definitely recommend Becoming Astrid. It's a phenomenal movie that tells a story about someone uh, that's quite, for me anyway, unexpected. And I, I love stories like that in general. So Becoming Astrid, also on Hoopla. It is a Swedish language film, so it, it does have subtitles, but well worth the extra reading time if you get the chance to watch. My final two recommendations, of course, both come from Canopy, and the first of those is for a movie called Liani. Now, this movie follows an incredible woman uh, as she struggled to remain an independent freethinker in a time period when women were often not given those opportunities. Uh, so it takes place primarily in the early 1900s. Now, Liani was an independent thinker. She was a brilliant writer. She was someone who longed for the freedom to, to do what she wanted without all of the strictures that society had on her. Uh, she ends up becoming the secretary and editorial assistant of a rather famous Japanese poet uh, at the time who was named uh, Yone Noguchi. Now, their relationship develops into a romantic one, and she ends up pregnant. Obviously, this is a time period when uh, multiracial relationships were just not done. She eventually ends up in Japan uh, with this child that she absolutely adores, but she has no husband. She has no familiarity at the time with the language. She is isolated, she is alone, and she still survives. And she survives in such a way that it helps her child to thrive. Her child eventually becomes a renowned artist named Isamu Noguchi. And she, she never at any point ever ceases in her belief that he will find success, that he is an artist at heart, that he deserves all of the rights that all of these other people have. And it is just a really amazing movie about a fascinating woman. It's essentially a love letter to this mother who did everything she could for her child and who still 
maintained her own independence, her own belief in herself. Uh, if you are interested in movies about really fascinating people who you may have never heard of, because I certainly had never heard of her before, um, though I had heard of both her husband or her partner and her son, uh, definitely check this one out. It's really wonderfully made and phenomenally well acted. So uh, Liani, excellent movie, also available on Canopy. My final recommendation of the week is for a movie called Mad to be Normal. Now Mad to be Normal sort of traces a large part of the career of this celebrity psychiatrist from the 60s and the 70s named R.D. Lang. Now R.D. Lang is played by David Tennant of Doctor Who fame and Tennant is incredible in this role. So Lang was super controversial at the time. Um, he would be super controversial today as well. Uh, he treated a great number of patients with LSD, which today also would be considered controversial. But what's fascinating about him is that at the time he also behaved in a way with far more compassion than your average medical profession was treating those who were dealing with mental health issues. It's, it's, it's really interesting to watch. Now, um, I haven't done a huge amount of research into um, other treatments of, of that particular time period, but the movie does an incredibly good job of painting him with a very full brush. You know, they don't shy away from his more ridiculous behaviors, but they also definitely don't make him into this sort of outlandish or solely outlandish figure. He's a very compassionate um, being in this. Uh, he's also uh, joined by Elizabeth Moths of The Handmaid's Tale, who is always, always incredible in whatever role she takes on, along with Gabriel Byrne, uh, Michael Gambon, uh, tons of other familiar faces that you will 100% recognize when you watch this. And it's just, it's a really fantastically well done period piece. I mean, it screams 60s and 70s, everything from, of course, the costumes, but the, the, the music, um, the set pieces, everything feels, even the dialogue feels so 60s and 70s. Um, so if you're looking for sort of a serial comic film that does period values really, really well, check out Mad to be Normal. Thoroughly entertaining, um, funny in parts, uh, dramatic in other parts, uh, very, very well acted from top to bottom. Check it out. It's Mad to be Normal, also on Canopy. Now, with that, I have gone through all my recs for the week. Um, as always, if you have something that you've been watching that you think others should be watching as well, please comment and let us know in the uh, in the comments section. Uh, we always love hearing recommendations from our fellow patrons and our fellow movie lovers. Uh, if you have recommendations for me about different themes that you'd like to see covered, please share those as well. I am always looking for um, help putting together new theme lines. So uh, with that, I'm going to go ahead and sign off and wish everybody a fantastic week. And I will see you next Friday. Bye.